all doing? I'm so glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. A little late, but uh, been moving pretty, pretty quick since 7 o'clock this morning, and for some reason I just couldn't get here. I tried. I took Tuesday off. Today's Wednesday. I took yesterday, Tuesday off. And I took Monday off. I, I just needed to rest. Uh, I, I don't know why I need to rest, but I I know that I need to rest. I don't know why I need to rest, but I don't know why I need to rest. I have, you know, both. <laughs> that sounds kind of weird to say it that way. But uh, one of the things that, uh, that, you know, we all have a tendency to put ourselves down. You know, we know all of our faults. We know all the struggles we've gone through. We know all of our sin if you're a believer. If you're not a believer, then you don't know you're a sinner. Uh, get saved and then you'll know that you're a sinner you once were and now you're washed with the blood of the Lamb of God and uh, so you know but those who are saved those who are born again those who have are a new creature in Christ the old man has passed away and we're a new man mankind our spirit man our inner man and uh, there's no gender in the spirit our spirit is neither male nor female. The male or female part is on the outside. Okay, it's what people look at, that part. But the inside is different. It's not made up of flesh and bones. It's made up of light, spirit. Anyways, uh, so we have a tendency to put ourselves down and we really need to catch ourselves quickly quickly and to do that you pray and ask the Holy Spirit what can you do to stop that or to eliminate it or to halt it when you go to the world and you ask the world for direction you're gonna get the world's direction because what you ask you're gonna receive if you go to the world if you go to God and ask for His direction, God's direction, then you're going to get to God's direction. You won't get the world's direction, you get God's. So you have a choice to make. You can go to the world or you can go to God and ask for your direction, for your information. How do you solve a problem? Uh, you know, probably, probably around 1990, somewhere in that time frame, I came to the realization that man and the world do not have the answer that I seek. I'm born again, been preaching for, for a long, long time, started preaching in 74, and this is 1990, for example. And I prayed for a long time, asking the Lord, where, what's going on with my life? And the Lord showed me that, that the difference. And he showed me that in John chapter 10, verse 10, where there's basically two parts, the God of this world and the God who made the world. Now you can go to the God of this world or you can go to the God who made this world. Hope you get what I'm trying to say. And so the reason why we go to the God of this world is we ask people, what should I do? Where do I go? And so they tell you what they think. That's asking the world, that's asking mankind for direction. And they say, well, you know, do this or do that. And uh, so I was asking at that time, and I was told by the world that I should go and get counseling. I said, all right, you know, I'll try that, you know. So I sat down with the preacher and we counseled, and uh, I sat with him for two years. Every, I think it was a Tuesday, whenever I was coming in from the truck, and I think I had to alternate it because of my truck schedule. And uh, so I, 24 months, every week for 24 months, two years. And I learned a ton of information. Very wise man, he's passed away since then, I'm pretty sure, because he was pretty old then, and that was a long time ago. 30 years ago, uh, he probably, if he hasn't passed away, he's probably, probably 95 years old. 
90, in his 90s, but I'm sure. He, anyways, his name was Alan. So Alan gave me a lot of information that I had to dissect on my own. And I realized through those two years, from 90 to 92, some, something like that, I'm not sure exactly, um, that the world and mankind and the traditions of man and the God of this world, Satan, don't have the answer. Now they have an answer. I'm not saying they don't have an answer, they have an answer. You ask him the question, you ask Satan a question, he's going to give you an answer. No question about it, he will. You ask somebody that you know, you ask a friend or a family member, they're going to give you an answer. Many people will not say, I don't know, go to God. That's normally not the answer. Normally. And if you find somebody who says, I don't have the answer, God has the answer, go there. Then that's a friend. That's somebody you got to hang around with. That's where I'm headed for. And so uh, during that two years of kind of deciphering and breaking down what Alan told me, about ministry and about building a church and uh, just my life in the ministry, life as a husband, life as a father, all that kind of stuff. Uh, it was a wonderful time. And an interesting caveat, after the two years, I learned greatly. In fact, it prepared me for what was going to happen in another two years. That totally changed my whole world and still has to this day, 2023. And so the person who told me to go do that, and I took their advice because it made sense to me. I thought, okay, I'll go do that. They, after the two years or into the third year, they discredited everything I learned in two years. And there I, fa I found out that you cannot take your direction from man because they will always flip on you. They'll always turn around. They'll always say, oh, I didn't say that. Uh, you misread me or you mis... If you go to God and get His direction, then that won't happen. That really shook me up because I poured my heart into listening to Alan for those two years. And then after the two years was done, oh, that was a waste of your time. You should never, you know, blah, 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 blah. Went on and on and on. Anyways, but that person who said that is no longer in my life either. How about that? God took him out. And we took him out of my life. And so, I learned in John 10, verse 10, you can take the information from the God of this world, which controls people, or you can take the information, the answer and the direction from the life giver, Jesus Christ, who gives you life and life more abundantly. And so, these last couple days, uh, you know, one of the tools that God gave me. So I asked God for my help, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you. And so God gave me a tool. He gave me a pocket calendar and he scheduled all my locations in the calendar and then he gave me uh, a, a, a vista, a 10-year window to look at. I looked across the field over a 10-year timeline and it says, I want you to touch 10 million people I want you to spend 10,000 hours out there in the field and believe that you'll save and touch a million people for heaven. Something like that. All right. <clears throat> and so I started on that direction from God. Anytime I have a question about my direction, I always go back to the one who told me what to do. I don't go to man now and ask them, well, what do you think God meant when he said, I don't do that. I always go to God. God has the answer. And for some reason, believers still, still, after all these centuries and centuries, still struggle with going to God for the answer. I don't know, I don't understand that. They go to people and ask, how do I solve my problem? So anyways, so the last two days, the Lord kept reassuring me that everything's just fine, John. But the world tried to put me down. Oh, you're being lazy. I wasn't being lazy. I was working. I was busy. I'm not just laying around sucking my thumb trying to figure out what to do next. I'm working. 
behind the scenes. I'm not on the camera, obviously. And the Lord kept showing me that I'm not doing this for a day or two. So I, I'm, you know, I can take a day off. I can take two days off. Because I'm not in it for the, sh for the little haul. I'm in it for the long haul. Long haul. Long haul trucker. <laughs> I'm in it for the long haul. I'm not going to be in it until I get tired of it. I'm not going to be in it until I get bored of it. I don't stop reading the Bible because, well, I've already read this once. I don't need to read it again. I've already prayed to God once. I don't need to pray again. I've already, you know, served the Lord once. I don't need to serve Him again. I've already given to the ministry once. That's good enough. I don't need to give again. That's a mentality of a lot of believers in the body of Christ. Now, in my own personal view, I've never got that. I could never figure that out. Because I've never been that way. I, I've just been gifted to know that, you know, you sow one seed, and then after that you sow another seed and another seed. You just keep sowing. Uh, you know? You know, especially those who raised on a farm or, a, or a, had a garden or grew plants. That's what we did. We are on a small little, you know, two acres up in Washoe City, uh, Washoe Valley, and then six acres down the farms in Washoe Valley, eight acres total. We had chickens, we had rabbits, you know, we had massive garden. You know, we grew and we harvested. And I learned a lot about growing things, you know, animals and plants. But I think I knew a lot about that even way before that, because that was, uh, we started doing that when I was about eight years old, fourth grade fourth grade and uh, you know you don't want to wait until you have massive tragedy in your life before you ch make a decision to change change you know we have a, a lot of us believers we have loved ones that we're praying for but those loved ones we've witnessed to them we talked to them we've loved on them and they still reject Christ. What kind of love is that? When somebody rejects the one that you love and they reject it. I, I don't get that either. Are they really in love with you if they reject the one that you love so deeply? I don't know. You really got to sit down and talk with the ones you're praying for, like my grandfather. You know, I prayed for him. I wanted to people, one of many I talk about, and, um, but he gave love back to me. He loved, you know, he knew the one that I love, Jesus Christ, but he wasn't interested, but he never, he always kept the love between us going. That's what was so unique and special about my grandfather. Grandpa Barker is my mom's dad, <clears throat> my dad's dad uh, died when I was only uh, in kindergarten, fifth grade. I only saw him a few times. Don't remember him clearly. I kind of remember him, but don't really remember him. And then my grandmother on my dad's side passed away when my dad was only two years old. <clears throat> and so uh, and then my mom, my grandmother on my mom's side she passed away when she was about 98, I think, 97, 98, six, some, late 90s. She had Alzheimer's for the last 20 years of her life, though, 15 years, something like that. And so for the last two days, I was able to not be depressed, not get down, not wondering, whoa, woe is me, what to do next. I stayed busy. I stayed in the peace of God. I stayed in the joy of the Lord while I was resting. Because, because I have a tool that God gave me. Now your tool will be different, probably. But the tool that God gives you for the answer to your question will last through time, okay, till time is no more. When man gives you the answer or the tool or whatever you, know, you need, uh, it's only temporary. It won't last. It'll it'll fail, fizzle away and disappear. It's 
pretty windy out here, so I don't know if this video is coming through clearly. I'm trying to have the wind in my face <laughs> so it doesn't come onto the microphone. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. What I'm, and let me recap what I'm saying here in this first part of the video. And that is you have a choice to make. Every single person has struggle of all kinds and all types. Every one of us. Nobody does not have struggle, period. Understand that. You're not the only one. Every single person, no matter how rich or how poor or how many families you've got or how many families you don't have. If you're all by yourself or you've got a flock of people around you, it doesn't matter. Every single person has struggle. So now we've got that under control. We know that. Now the next point is to solve the struggle, solve the problem, solve the situation. And now you have a choice to make. And that is you can go to God or you can go to man, the world. You can go to the God of this world, Satan, all those who follow Satan and all that stuff. Or you can go to God who created the world, who died on the cross for you, and go to Him. And then, uh, so you have a choice. Even, believer or non-believer. If you're not a believer, you don't, you're not saved, then I would suggest you go to God. <laughs> and ask Him to save you. That's your first big problem. Get that saved first. Because all the others will kind of, you know, work themselves out as you continue to go to God who will save you. Now there's another hint right there for those who are believers. I just told somebody who's not saved, you go to God first, He'll save you, and then you just keep going back to God to solve your problems. That's how you do it. However, believers, once they got saved, then they go to church. Then they go to church, and now they shifted their focus from God to their pastor. And now their pastor has all the answers. Their priest has all the answers. Their father, you know, their minister, their preacher has all the answers. Not God anymore. You see, you messed up there. So you got to cut that off. You know, don't, you know, I'm not telling you don't go to church or don't listen to your pastor. I'm not talking about that. But just take everything that's said to you and go to God. Go to God. And God will reveal Himself through His Word, through the stillness of your heart, through the still small voice, through, you know, through working with you. You'll know it's God. No question about that. You'll know it's God. And if you don't know it's God, then you just keep waiting until you know it's God. And then you move out with God. God is with you if you're saved. Even if you're not saved, God is still trying to get you to come to Him. I don't care how mean you are, how rotten you are. God still loves you, man. That's why He died on the cross. He doesn't like the sin. He hates the sin in your life. And He hates the potential, the possibility if you've never received Him. He hates the idea and the thought that you can go to hell and burn forever. Because you're not going to heaven and you're not going to come back to the world, you're not going to party. It's going to be horrible, 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 horrible to the millionth times the millionth degree. Horrible. And if you know somebody who is not saved and you've not told them yet, shame on you. I was walking down here today, five, at least five people I said hello to wouldn't give me a, even a glance wouldn't give me a time of day. My heart broke for every one of them, all different ages. My heart broke for them. You know, what can you do, right? And so I was thinking about that, then I had an RTD bus driver, God bless him. He stood here and talked with me before, I, th I think before I turned the camera on. And uh, he just, he must have told me three times, he says, you're doing a good work. You're doing a good work on the Lord. You're doing a good work on the Lord. Keep doing it. I said, it gets tough. He says, I know. Just keep doing it. You're doing a good work. Man. Now, you see what happened? God sent a sign following me. I came out, did what I was supposed to do, and then somebody came, you're doing a good work. And it just lifted my spirit so I can do this video here. Isn't that amazing? You know, uh, 
I, I'm not going to preach on this because I'm going to end the video here. But I, I want to mention this is February 5th Sunday prayer letter. The title is called The Lord Granted Signs and Wonders. It's Acts 14, verse 3. And we're in the theme called Signs, Wonders, Miracles, Praise, Worship. Those five words. And this whole week we're in chapter 14 of Acts. And Acts 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. We also have several other verses that I've not preached on. I probably will tomorrow, but not today. The other verses are Acts 4, 29 through 31. Uh, 1 Samuel uh, 117, 1 Chronicles 410, and Acts 13, 51 and 52. And lastly, for the base of all this is James 4, 3, or more specifically James 3, 17, which is the last part of 3, all the way to ch James chapter 4, verse 10. Somehow, maybe I'll put those verses in the video description box here. But uh, I'm done preaching. What I want, I just want you to know that John 10:10, 10, 10, the thief cometh not but to kill, to destroy. To let me let me just read it so I don't get it all mixed up because sometimes I do that. John chapter 10, verse 10. And you can go through everything in your life and use this as a filter. And when you put everything into this funnel the funnel has a, uh, a dividing line on the top of it a kind of a little divider wall and you put everything in the funnel and it'll divide out and it'll separate when it comes out the bottom of the funnel there'll be two piles two piles okay and here's the here's the funnel uh, John chapter 10 verse 10 okay here's the first half of the funnel the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Steal, kill, and destroy. Okay, let me talk about that. Everything that you're going through can either be there or the other thing that I'm going to talk about. Okay? And I'm, I'm talking about anything. It, you know, just. Okay, now the next part of the funnel is this. It's part 2 of part B of chapter 10, verse 10. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. So, I am come, I is Jesus Christ. This is Jesus speaking here. And it was written down by the Spirit of God through man who was called by God to write it all down. And then man came in there because they were struggling. They went to the world. And the world told them, oh, you don't want to write that. You want to write this. That's why there's corruption in the Bible. Not this Bible, but other Bibles. And I know people don't like that. But that's life. And the thief is Satan, the deceiver. Lucifer. That was taken out of the Bibles. A lot of Bibles do not have Lucifer in it. A lot of Bibles have taken out the name of God also, Jehovah. How sad, right? And that's the Bible you're reading. Oh, we don't need to mention God's name. Let's just take that out. We don't want to mention Satan's name, Lucifer, because, you know, he doesn't exist. That's the Bible that many people read, and they, oh, this is the, this is the Word of God. It says Holy Bible on it. It's got to be the Bible. My preacher, my pastor preaches out of it. All right, have fun. The thief cometh, the thief Satan cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus has come that they might have life, and they might have life more abundantly. Life and life more abundantly, more abundantly. So that's the filter right there. You can strain everything through those two items. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord, we praise you and we ask you for help in understanding the truth. We know that truth sets us free. Truth opens our eyes 
truth opens our ears and truth gives us a heart to understand. Lord, we thank you that truth is what we stand upon. We thank you, Lord, that truth is what we walk in. We thank you, Lord, that your Bible is called the Word of Truth. And we thank you, Lord, that Satan was called a liar. So now we know that the liar has no truth in him. That's what you said, Jesus. And the truth is not in him. He was a liar from the beginning. So now we know that that God of this world is a liar. We can't find truth there. So, Lord, we look to you for our truth because you said, I am the way, life, and the truth. I am the truth. I am truth. Thank you, Lord. So now we know exactly where to go to get truth, if we want truth. We also know exactly where to go if we want to get a lie. We have a choice to make, just like this gentleman from the RTD bus driving system said, we all have a choice. Some people make wrong choices. Lord, help us all make right choices, the correct choice, the proper choice to have eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for giving us the power to go out and the power to witness and the boldness to preach and declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. Help us, Lord, to give us that boldness to preach and that power to be a witness, to give people our testimony. And Father, we give you all the glory, for yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever and ever and ever. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <laughs> Tomorrow is Thursday. I'm going to be in Superior, Colorado, just outside of town here, another next town over. Tonight's church, Gospel Evangelist Church, we have early prayer at 6.30. And then uh, we have our fellowship, our house church at 7.30. Go to about 9 o'clock. So, uh, God bless you, man. I love you very much. The reason I, I can tell you that is because I'm doing it right now. I'm, I'm demonstrating to you that I love you. Because I would prefer not to do what I'm doing right now. This is uncomfortable. But I'm doing the uncomfortable because I love you. And I love you because God loved me first. Now I can give away this love to you. Amen? Take care.